everyone. This is Jean and I'm back with another video. I hope everybody is well. So today I'm going to be discussing uh, blackface and brownface. First of all, before I get started, I just want to thank everybody. Uh, I just checked my, sub my subscriber count and I've just crested a little over 300. So to everyone, uh, thank you so much. I am quite humbled that you guys are that there's 300 some people who are interested in hearing what a grumpy middle-aged fat lady from New York City has to say. But so, so thank you again all uh, all of you so much for the comments um, especially for the well wishes given the uh, uh, very uh, what's the word I'm looking for I guess not so great emotional state I was in last week like I said uh, very fearful times uh, I'm starting to, I guess, get used to it, right? The, it's coming down. I don't feel as anxious as, as I did. Ah, come on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't feel as anxious as I did uh, last week, which is good, right? If you have to choose, it's better to be less anxious than more. So again, thank you to everybody. Uh, thank you so much for for the outpouring of care and 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 support and thank you all 300 strong you know <laughs> wanting to listen to me so let me get into the video right now why am I talking about uh, black face and brown face right well the reason I'm talking about it is because a few days ago an artist named Babs Tarr uh, who is a freelance comic artist who did some uh, work for uh, Batgirl right so some work for DC drew herself, drew an idealized, like, you know, super heroine version of herself. Now, I've seen the uh, pictures. I thought it looked very nice, right? Had this, like, like um, feminine yet punk uh, look to her. And from what I saw, I thought that the images looked great. And if that's uh, how she sees her idealized self, then... I got no problem uh, uh, with it. It's fine to me, right? She's an artist. The, the job of an artist is to express them themselves in various and sometimes unconventional ways, right? And if, and if this uh, 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 sexy punk type thing is how she sees herself, then go on. Go on with, with, with your bad self, as it were. But the issue that many online, because this is the internet, this is Twitter, and everybody's a reactionary and nobody wants to think, is that she was committing digital blackface or digital brownface because of the fact that uh, her idealized version of herself had a deeper skin tone, had a tan, basically, right? And so, given that I do literally have a brown face, I wanted to weigh in on it. And this is not something new, right? The accusations of, of blackface and brownface came up even last year with the Covington kids scandal from from last year uh, when the uh, news, because they're such good, decent, honest people, you know, dug up uh, Covington's past of, of having, uh, uh, in sports it's called, uh, some some sort of like color out, right? They would have different color outs, blue outs, white outs, black outs. And of course, the the news uh, focused on the black out because of the fact that uh, they went with this race angle with the Covington kids, right? Right, you know, the, the, the awkward uh, white boy, you know, smiling nervously at at the uh, uh, old Native American man who's drumming, who's who's you know pounding a drum right in his face, so racist, so racist, right? But even in like the say like cosplay community, I remember reading a story a few years back about I think it was a Korean cosplay, New York City. <laughs> but anyway. There was a Korean cosplayer, if I remember correctly, who was dressing up, and, and she was like a pro cosplayer, right? So, so she wasn't a casual. She was dressing up as one of the brown-skinned characters in, in Overwatch. I, I want to say Farah, right? One of them, right? Sombra, Farah, one of those types, 
right? And to complete the look, right, she made her face brown to complete the look, to look like the character, which is her job as a cosplayer, right? And then, of course, there were people saying that, that she was being disrespectful and insensitive and all these things. Here's the way I look at it as a person with quite literally brown skin. If you're going to accuse someone of black face and brown face, first of all, you need to know what black face and brown face is, right? It's more than simply using makeup to darken your skin, right? To look a certain tone, right? Using makeup to lighten or darken your skin is nothing new. If you've ever seen, like, like beauty channels are like a huge deal, right? on YouTube, right? Beauty channels made by men like James Charles, Jeffree Star, right? Beauty channels made 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 by women, you will see that makeup is used, right, for like contouring and, and for different things and to change how light or how dark your skin looks. Are you going to accuse them of brown face or black face? Right? Especially when it, when, it, when it comes to people who are like artists, right? Artistic types. They will use makeup, right? And the, the skin darkening or skin lightening properties of makeup to express them, themselves in different ways. You have to take into account the context of what they're doing and why they're doing it. But anyway... Blackface, brown face is a lot more than simply making your skin tone lighter or darker via the use of makeup, right? It's also the exaggeration of features. For example, if you want to talk about actual blackface, right? Back in the Jim Crow era, right? The late 1800s, the early 1900s, right? The point of blackface back then, and this is the biggest part, was to demean African Americans. It was white performers darkening their their skin right uh exaggerating their their features for example right the nose african americans tend to have large noses the thick lips as you can see <laughs> right exaggerating what more often than not comes natural to us right exaggerating it to grotesque proportions Right, the whole I, the whole idea about it, right, was to exaggerate what what black people look like to grotesque proportions to demean them, right, to demean us. That was the point of it. A more modern example might be, for example, yellow face, right, which is done to mock Asians, right, pulling at the eyelid to to do the the uh, almond eye shape, right. If, you, if you've ever seen. Um, uh, I think it's the music video for David Bowie's China Girl. He does that, right? He pulls out his eyelid to make himself look more Asian because East Asians in particular are known for the narrow al almond eyes, right? Or you can think of, I, I think, some roles that I think it's Mickey Rooney had in some movies back in the 80s where he's playing like the stereotype of a nerdy Japanese guy, right? So the eyes are narrow. He has the buck teeth and and all this stuff, right? That, that wasn't done to better look like an Asian person, right? That was done to mock and demean them. That's the purpose behind yellow face, black face, brown face, or anything of that sort. It is to mock and demean and dehumanize. From what I've seen of, of Baptar's work, there was no intent to do any of those things. She was literally just drawing herself in a super heroic figure and she gave her idealized self a tan. She wasn't even claiming that oh it was her as a black person. It was her as a t with 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 a tan. That's all it is, right? What I find more and more especially with these SJW types is that it is often a matter of perspective, right? There are old sayings, right? If you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Or if you want to get a little more modern, there's everybody's favorite uh, anti-gaming feminist, Anita Sar Sarkeesian, in her famous, everything is sexist, everything is racist, everything is problematic, and you have to point it all out. 
that's the from best I can tell. That's the mindset and the ideology these people uh, come in with. They come in with this overly critical eye. And anything that they don't understand or anything that they personally don't like, it goes beyond simply, this offends me, to this is offensive. And then these people want to stand up for people like myself, who actually has a brown face. And I'm like, I see no issue here. Like, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. If I wanted to, if I was the overreactionary SJW type with this overly critical eye, I could argue that even the character of Ahsoka in Star Wars is blackface or brownface in a way. Now you may be going, well, how in the world could you do that? Well, here's how. First of all, she's brown, right? And I could use, say, like Starfire, right, in Titans. I could go, well, you know what? Ahsoka is brown. Ah Ahsoka is orange. She's an orange alien, right? She's an orange alien, and we've seen with D DC that when they take their orange alien characters like Starfire, they cast black people to play them, right? Ro Ro Rosario Dawson is slated to play Ahsoka. So Ahsoka is obviously meant to be a brown person. Ahsoka is a person of color. She's an alien of color. Right? And I and, and I could also go if I was that reactionary type and go, have, have you seen her lips? Have you seen those thick lips? It's an exaggeration of a black woman's lips. She is offensive. It is blackface. Lucasfilm, cancel yourself. Or, or, or whatever it is. Or whether, whether, whatever obscene demand. I'm not that creative. <laughs> but my, my point is that if I wanted to, I could argue that anything is offensive in some matter. If I wanted to, I could argue that when the pro wrestler Dustin Rhodes right, is in his uh, gold dust gimmick, that he's being offensive towards Asians because he wears yellow face paint, right? I could argue that if I wanted to. Now, a reasonable person would say, but Gene, he doesn't make himself look Asian. He wears the makeup and the costume because he's trying to emulate an Oscar statue, which is the truth. That's the point of the character. It's supposed to be an Oscar statue come to life, right? But an unreasonable person doesn't care about the reasons why. An unreasonable person simply sees something they don't like, they don't understand, and they immediately go, this is bad. I don't like it. I don't understand it. So it is bad, and it must go so that my feelings aren't hurt. I just really wish that before people, especially given just so how reactionary um, the internet is, right? that before accusing somebody of something that, that especially for an artist, right, it's hard out there for artists to get work, right? Especially with comics still burning down around us, you know, you know, the DC dropped Diamond, I will eventually cover that, right? But there's a lot of stuff going on, right? Shops are just reopening, books have been canceled, right? The, the comics has been trying to to hold on to any thread it can find, right? It's that like, you know, dr um, a drowning person, right? Trying to hold on to anything, right? To to give them themselves a, a slightly higher chance of survival. So it's gonna be really hard out there currently for comic artists to get work. So to accuse somebody of digital blackface or, or, or digital brown face it's not just saying something dumb or something insulting, right? It is, um, uh, it could potentially impact their career, impact their their livelihood, right? Which is already um, thrown for a loop because of the coronavirus, right? Many many writers and, and artists were told about two months ago, you know, pencils down because everything was shut down. So you're not just uh, being salty toward Babstar when you make accusations like this, you're also making it that much more difficult for her to make a living. And that's not not fair. Now, I do have to blame Babs for this much though. 
Babs, like many people who are in the SJW crowd. She at first defended herself, which was perfectly fine and normal, right? She pretty much asked, what's so bad about it? But what happens is that eventually she caved and she put out this long statement about how she needed to learn more about the about the black community and be a better ally and all this other silly mess. Even Sean Gordon Murphy has done this recently. He put out a tweet about wanting, you know, better police and no looting and sim very reasonable stuff, right? A lot of the stuff that I was saying in uh, some of my videos uh, last week, <laughs> excuse me, about how the looting hurts us all, right? Perfectly normal, rational position. The SJWs get mad at him, and then, of course, he caves and acquiesces and says that, I will do better. I will do better. There is a difference between humility and plain um, subservience, right? Humility is a strength, right? Being able to admit when you were wrong, being able to humble yourself before another person is a strength. But when you do that too much, you take something that's a strength and you turn it into a weakness, right? Nobody respects a weak person. Nobody respects a simp, right? And Babs and Sean Gardner Murphy, in, in, in their respective cases, were simping to the mob. Because cause here's the thing, they were not wrong. Sean wasn't wrong in what he said. He wanted perfect... What he said was what I was saying, and it was, and it was perfectly reasonable, right, about the riots and all that. It's hurt people on both sides, and it needs to end. There's nothing wrong with that. Babs drawing herself, however she wants to look, is nothing wrong with that. It's an, it's an artist depiction. There's nothing wrong with it. There was nothing offensive about it. But it's as the old saying goes, right? If you stand for nothing, you will fall for, for any and everything. And that's the problem here, right? These people... People like Sean Gordon Murphy, people like Babs Tar, the moment they encounter any resistance, right, they just cave. They just fold like a house of cards. And Babs was even telling people in tweets to not defend her. To not defend her. Don't defend me in the comments, people. She was taking, it was, it was like willingly taking lashes. Right, I remember a few years, maybe about four, maybe five or six years ago, there was this clip uh, by, I think it was The Amazing Atheist, I'm not sure. But this was like height of Gamergate, feminist frequency and all that, and there was this clip I, of, of a white guy, it's, it's, it's part of a skit, right? But a white guy taking a belt, right? Taking a belt and he's whipping himself, he's hitting himself in the back and going, Sorry, I'm white. Sorry, I'm male. No, you don't have to apologize for those things. Those are things you don't apologize for. You apologize when you're in the wrong. You apologize when you've committed a sincere offense and you've seen that you're wrong, right? But you don't apologize for simply being who you are. You don't apologize for having a reasonable take of a very complex and painful situation. You don't apologize for drawing your idealized self as your idealized self. <laughs> Those are not things to apologize for. And when you apologize for them, you give these people power over you. It's like a little kid, right? It's like a baby, right? They cry, mom and dad come running. They cry again, mom and dad come running. Even if the baby is not consciously aware of it, what they're learning is that if I cry, if I yell and scream, mom and dad will come and they'll give me what I want. And that's what they do. Right? And that's what they do. And sometimes, I, I think as any parent knows, I only know it from the experience of having, uh, I had several adopted cousins, right? And I was a teenager. And so we would spend time at my cousin's house, so, so they're babies, right? I remember one time where the boy, I think is the boy Thomas, the right little baby, cute, adorable as a baby, 
I haven't seen him in years, unfortunately, but I hope they're well. But he was adorable as baby. He was my favorite. <laughs> of course, I got along with, with the uh, boy the uh, most. But there was one time where he just wailed. I mean, just wailed. Uncontrollably. Just, Aah! I'm like, he's screaming bloody murder. And his mother's like, just let him. <coughs> just let him. Because he wasn't, he didn't need anything, right? It wasn't like he was, he was wet or he was sick or he was hungry. She had checked all that, right? And my mother was there too, so she had checked all that. It was nothing of that sort. He wasn't in need of anything. He was just screaming. He was screaming to scream. He wanted attention. His mother said, look, just don't. He's just screaming. He'll, he'll, he'll just scream himself out. Just leave him alone. And it was hard because, dear God, could that baby wail? But eventually, yeah, he screamed himself right to sleep. And you got to treat these people sometimes in the same way. They're not worth responding to. Not every criticism is valid. Not every criticism is valid. Not every opinion uh, needs to be listened to. And certainly not every opinion needs to, to, to actually be um, uh, acted upon, right? Or addressed. But when you don't stand up for yourself, when you, when you just fold like, like a house of cards... It's like that wailing child. They'll just keep wailing and wailing and wailing and wailing. And it solves nothing. Right? There are times when you have to stand your ground. Right? Like the song says, right? You can stand me up at the gates of hell, but I'll stand my ground. And I won't back down. Little Tom Petty there. From a woman who can't sing worth a damn. But anyway, uh, that's the video. Please let me know what you think, and I will see you all in the next one. I have a long day today. I'll see you all next time. Bye.